When you start a new game of Pixel Art Academy, your goal is to get admitted to Retropolis Academy of Art. And to do that, you fill in your application, you get your Pixel Boy, and now you have to complete an admission project. Hello and welcome to Pixel Art Academy 101, the show where you learn everything about my video game Pixel Art Academy. I'm Retro and today we're gonna look at the first admission project that you can play now if you have alpha access. The admission project we're gonna look at today is the kind of classic example I like to give about Pixel Art Academy and what kind of game it is. And so while you're walking around Retronator headquarters you meet a developer, in this case my good friend Ruben and he is making a video game on a system called Pico 8. He's only doing the code parts and he wants somebody to do the art and that's where you step in. Pico 8 is not part of the whole Pixel Art Academy lore, it's an actual thing that exists in real life right now. Actually, it's kind of not in real life because it's a fantasy console. Let me explain, but first we need to go all the way back to the 80s to kind of understand how computers worked back then. So with early computers, say that you have a ZX Spectrum or a Commodore 64, as soon as you turn on the device, the first thing that opens up is just a command prompt. You go straight into the programming language interface. Back then we didn't have internet, so instead of downloading, we would find listings like written code inside of magazines and books and we couldn't copy paste either so we would just retype everything in just to play a game. Even my elementary school children's magazine had little small programs that would draw a sailboat or make a quiz about traffic signs. Of course you could get programs and games on cassette tape, but a lot of times we were actually just typing them in. And believe it or not, we actually learn how to code just by typing in programs. And I'm sure not everyone learned this way, but if you talk to anyone of my generation or older, people that had computers back home, when you could just start typing coding, they'll tell you similar stories of how they got interested in making their own stuff. Repetition and decision. So that's how computer programs work. Yes, they aren't really so difficult, are they? That's one of the main concepts behind Pico 8 and other fantasy consoles that you can just start getting right into development of your own games and programs. Another thing is also that there are certain limitations. Pico 8 runs in 128 by a 128 screen, there's only 16 colors. You have a limitation how long programs can be. And so that kind of forces you to keep your ideas small and not go crazy with all the possibilities and actually finish something. It also creates some sort of a cohesion between all of the games developed for that platform and the 16 colors that are used in Pico 8 are actually so prevalent even outside Pico 8, it's just a palette that a lot of pixel artists work with. Pico 8 is a console like that and it's a fantasy console because it's not an actual console from the 80s, it's not an actual console now, it's just a program, it's an almost like an emulator except it's not emulating anything, it just is. And that's how also I put Pico 8 into Pixel Art Academy. I was talking to the creator Joseph White when I was first developing this prototype for the story where a game developer asks you to create art for him and they let me include it in the game, so I'm super excited about that. Of course you can't create games for it, you can only play the ones that I made and put into the game. So if you're interested in creating your own, then you can go to Lexalawful, that's Joseph's kind of internet nickname. You can go to Lexalawful's website and get it for yourself. But for now, let's take a look how all of this actually looks like in Pixel Art Academy. 
So you talk to Ruben and he says he's creating a snake game. Remember those in Nokia times? So first of all, you gotta get the Pico 8 4 Pixel Boy up in the store. So you go there, you have a new app on your Pixel Boy, run it, there's the cartridge, you play it, see how it looks like. And you can see that it has what we kind of call programmer art. It's kind of a joke because programmers usually don't also study art, so they would just draw some stick figures and squares and stuff. And that's actually a really good way to get started. Here's an example. My good friend Primoz Vogue of Ember Heart Games, he did graphics for a game that one of my students, when I was working as a teaching assistant, my student created the whole kind of tower defense game with programmer art and then Primoz would create pixel art for it before we uploaded that on the App Store and it just looks amazing. So this is the whole concept here. We have a working snake game and now we can go to the drawing app. There's a new project section where you will find snake and the two sprites that are being used in the game. One is for the snake body type and the other one is for the food. And just like we learned in the previous episode, you now use your drawing app to modify it in any way you want. There's also a Pico 8 right on the table right now. It's already preloaded with a cartridge, you open it up, start it and you immediately see how your new sprite looks like in the game. It's even crazier, you can just work side by side and if you edit the sprite it automatically gets updated in the game. You can also share what you've made with your friends. If you go to the Pico 8 app, there will be a link written on the case. So if you use this link, you can just send it to anyone you want and they can play your creation. They don't even have to have the game, it just plays in the browser. You can even open it up on a mobile device. It's kind of janky, I just kind of put it in for fun and on my iPhone I have to add the website to the home screen so that when it opens up it's full screen. Before anyone gives me shit about it, yes you can switch the d-pad onto the other side, just press the menu button and the reason why the d-pad is on the right by default is because you play on the desktop with arrow keys and Z and X are on the left and the arrow keys are on the right so I just want to keep that parallel going when you're moving your hand on your arrows on the right I want the device to reflect that now that you're on mobile it should actually play like a real console so you can switch now you have your d-pad on the left like you're all used to and just like before if I update the sprite in my drawing app it automatically updates on your mobile phone or on the website that you share with your friends right there it's all live it's kind of magic the whole idea of the admission project is to create something that showcases where your current knowledge is when you start to play the game. So that later on, as you go through Retropolis Academy of Art and you learn all this stuff, then you can compare, see where you are in, let's say, a year, and then look back. Maybe you just recreate this snake project one year later and see how much you've learned. You can learn shading, create a strong light source and shadows, and then you might learn about bounce lighting. So you put that in, you put cast shadows, change the stylization of it. There will be other requirements to finish admission week that I am yet to develop. And there will also be other admission projects like learning how to sketch with a pencil or doing like a traditional art studio still life drawing. I'm not sure how many of these projects I'm gonna develop now before I move on, but there will definitely be plenty of variety added to this chapter over the time. If you have alpha access to Pixel Art Academy, you can just go and play this right now. Otherwise, you're gonna have to wait until the admission week chapter gets released to everyone. 
If you want to just follow the development until the chapter is out, the best way to support this project is on Patreon, where everything that you contribute actually gets added to your game account so that you can then use those funds you contributed on Patreon to just buy the game. That's it for this update. I'm gonna be back very soon with another thing that's been added to the server, but more about that next time. Bye bye.